how you've clicked on to today's trop not tropical tidbit, but it's a tidbit about the weather. I need to find a better word to describe these when they're about things that are other than the tropics, but we'll work on that anyway. This is a tidbit about the weather, and the only reason I'm really talking about the winter so much recently is because this year I got interested because a lot of the forecasts that I've seen, in fact nearly all of them that I've seen, have cold uh, colder than normal forecast for the eastern United States this winter. And in particular, they're making a big deal about December and how the cold air is supposed to invade and overwhelm the east with cold to start off a winter very similar to the previous two that we have had, which have been obviously very cold and snowy in these areas. And to me, this went against some of the logic that I had in my head. I don't generally look at the winter very much, but this year I saw these forecasts and I decided, okay, I kind of feel like showing that these are going to be wrong and that there's going to be a different setup for the winter in the eastern part of the United States. So that's why I've been focusing on this. And as soon as we get through December, I'll probably stop talking so much about it if we indeed get a December that I think will be warmer than was forecasted. Now, here on this map, we're seeing the 500 millibar height anomalies since November 1st through this week. The big feature here is the big ridge that has built up over the northeastern Pacific in here and has been pretty far east. And it looks cold here in Alaska, but by the time we got past Thanksgiving, it started to really warm up here because this ridge has expanded eastward and a lot of warm air has been able to come in and flood the state and a lot of cold air has been shunted off into Canada. But notice how this makes sense. Did we know the switch was going to be here, whether the ensembles, uh, the models showed it or not? And the answer is yes, because I've talked about this. Notice how well it lines up with the warm pool of water, the pool of warm water in the northern Pacific associated with the negative PDO. Again, you can tell it's a negative PDO because of the cold horseshoe of water around the western coast of the North American continent with warm water east of Japan. And this warm pool is extending nicely far east this year. It's pretty strong. It's stronger than the last couple of cold PDO winters we've had. And therefore, the air is warmed above it and we get the heights in here. Look at how nicely that lines up. And that is what has been driving this pattern. And then you have, though, the cold water off the coast, which means that the jet wants to dive down, it comes up, and then it dives down over the western United States, and you get the cold air digging into the western part of the country and western Canada, which often happens during cold PDO winters. Now we're going to uh, shun the GFS right now for a little minute. This is the run back from the 25th of November right after Thanksgiving where I showed you guys, this is the day 12 forecast where we had the big trough that it showed for the first week of December down from basically the North Pole to the Gulf Coast and by day 15 it has the same trough there during this first week of December. And obviously this would be a very cold pattern for the east. It's a temperature anomaly forecast. We're all solid blue in here. Very cold temperatures and winter was proclaimed to be on the way for the eastern United States, but I explained how to get a trough like this is not impossible, but to get one this long and this far south is pretty hard because when you stare at the earth from up here, you can see it rotating counterclockwise, but when you get down here and you you stand up really high and you look down at it, it's not spinning as much, and thus the air that's coming down here is losing its planetary angular momentum and it wants to curve out and do a trough base a lot faster, and so to get it to come all the way down here before curving back poleward is pretty hard to pull off. And for that reason, and because of the cold water in the, in the eastern Pacific, I suggested that this trough would be cut off more with a rounder base and have the pieces get dropped down into the southwestern United States and have the trough split and not as deep as the GFS had it. And look what actually happened. This is the first week of December. Notice that we have the trough out here. We had the splitting going on, sending pieces into the southwest United States. We had a strong jet in between here, and the southeast ridge applied pressure. And guess what? The temperatures ended up being warmer than normal for the eastern United States during this period, and all the cold bottled up in the southwest, just like I said. So the ensembles are not always the rule of law here. They're not gospel truth, and there are physical realities that we can apply to these situations and come up with a better forecast as a human. Imagine a human forecasting out two weeks in advance better than our most sophisticated computers. It's not that brilliant. It's just recognizing that the computers can make mistakes and that there are greater things driving the weather than what our computers say is going to happen. 
Now, one of the reasons this has been such a great pattern is because, if we look over here, back to my first map, the Arctic Oscillation has been positive, which means we have a strong Arctic low up to the north, and it's been squishing everything down, and so we've had this pattern where the, the models have tried to shove the cold air down here. Everything is squished, so it's hard to work out the wavelengths and the pattern, but overall, this usually ends up in a warm eastern to central United States when the Arctic Oscillation is positive, but it ends up cold in the west. And we've had this persisting all fall now, especially November, and now into December, the Arctic Oscillation isn't showing any signs of going negative. Here's the current ensemble forecast, generally positive for the next couple of weeks, and we're likely going to see this right on through Christmas and the end of the month without a negative Arctic Oscillation, which means no blocking up over Greenland and Southeast Canada, which is what you really want if you want to get cold air trapped underneath in the eastern United States. And if we talk about the rest of the winter, not just December here, December is likely to stay neutral to slightly warmer than normal in the east, and we'll see how it ends up at the end. Probably not going to be severely colder than normal like the models forecasted. They've already failed on these first 10 days or so of the month. We'll see how that goes. If we talk about the rest of the winter, if we look at this fall, we've had a generally positive Arctic Oscillation in NAO. If we look at such falls that had a positive AO right through December, and then we look at those winters, if they had a cold PDO, then we get this very warm look in the southeast United States and out into the central part of the country. It's very hard to get away from this signal. The only year in this set, you can see all the years up here that I've selected, the only winter that really defied this in a big way was 1979, 1980, which had some cold down here, about one degree Celsius below normal, generally half a degree to a degree below normal in this part of the country during that winter. That was an exception, and the PDO was actually rapidly turning positive during this winter, although it averaged negative. That could be a reason why this turned around and turned cold in here, but all of these years um, were warm. It's very hard to get away from this signal. And another thing is that last year was La Nina, last year was cold in the East United States, very cold, as we all know. This year is also a La, a La Nina, a second year La Nina. We've never had back-to-back -back cold La Ninas in the East United States. As far back as we can go into the 1800s, we have not seen that happen. It's very hard to get away from a signal like that. It's obviously not impossible. Never say never with the weather. But there's a lot of indicators here that we're going to see a fairly warm winter overall in the southeast United States. And if you've been following my Facebook wall, which you should if you don't, I put up a map the other day for my general idea of the winter. And I wasn't going to do this, but I decided to, to make my point a little bit more clear that I think it's going to be generally warmer in the southeast and pretty cold overall in here. And you notice it's a little bit farther pressed down than the cold got in here. It was generally pretty warm in the plains during most of these positive AO winters. But here I think the cold will press down a little bit more given that the Indian Ocean is very warm, which I talked about in the last video. Generally allows uh, cold air to spill down into the southwest US a little bit more than normal. And the Arctic vortex has shown a tendency to set up over Canada. We've had a lot of low heights in here and that might allow some cold air to make a neutral, a slightly colder than average winter for northern New England and the Great Lakes. But in general, my forecast is a lot warmer than um, a lot of other people's. I haven't actually seen a forecast as warm as mine for this winter down here. So we shall see what happens. I'm just very intrigued by the situation and I'm pouncing on the opportunity to make a point if indeed that point is made by the end of this winter we will just see how it goes and again this is not totally pointless for the tropics because when you get ridging over here you increase the trade winds over the tropics and the waters cool in here which can inhibit heat content for the coming season so this is important as well because the cold winter can leave the water warmer like it did last year and we talked about that for this season so there are some ties to the tropics here and we will just keep an eye on this as time goes on all right that's it for today thanks for watching